Today, we're breaking down this amazing clip of Victor Wooten and Carter Beaufort. favorite of mine. And what's even more incredible is Victor and Carter's own words on how they're making this work and what makes it so special. So let's just dig right in. interplay between the ride and hi-hats from Carter. That's one of his trademarks for sure, right? Oh, those harmonics. All right, now we're back into 6-8. So maybe this is like the head of the song. Man, Carter's touch is beautiful. Actually, my drum teacher, when I was a kid, used to play with Victor Wooten. So I used to hear some stories about Victor and the rest of the Wooten brothers, some really incredible stuff. So it's great to revisit this. The tune they're playing is called Zenergy off of Victor's 1999 album, Yin Yang. I used to listen to this as a kid. It's funny, without counting this out loud myself, my brain just assumed it was 7-8 while playing along, but it's not, it's 5-8. This is one of those things where I was listening to this and playing along before I could read music and knew what a time signature was. There's definitely a couple songs like that because I grew up on prog rock. When I learned to read music in high school and learned what a time signature was, a couple days later I was playing along with a Jeff Beck tune and I realized it was in five and I was like, huh, what, that's not normal like the rest of them? This is another good example. Sometimes it's ride symbols just playing those eighth notes. One, two, three. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But what makes this dance beautifully in this five eight feel is the fact that the five is broken up into three and two, and then often you're feeling that at a faster subdivision. Instead of splitting up into three eighth notes and two eighth notes, we're gonna break it up into three sixteenth notes, three sixteenth notes and four sixteenth notes, that's 10 total. 10, 16, or five, eight, right? So if you think, instead of one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, during that three, eight section, think one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three, da, 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 da. So either three, three, four, or three, three, two, two. Just to get the feeling of it, I'll do the threes as right, left, left, and the twos as right, left. Okay, they're about to break this down, but before Carter and Victor talk, let's get into a little bit of the specifics about how Carter is doing. It's a beautiful hi-hat interplay. Let's check out what Carter's doing here. Now, the first thing is he's dancing around it, but a lot of the time he's outlining the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, da, 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 with his ride hand. I'm just gonna say ride hand instead of right hand because he's left hand. So he's outlining that rhythm a lot, and then the hi hat, the hi hat hand fills it in with a couple of, well, like I said before, right, left, left, in his case, left, right, right. Sometimes some diddles instead. And then he starts to dance around from there. I'll break down some of the ideas. I'm not gonna try to break down any of the exact stickings, but more just the general style of what he's doing. I'm gonna say it right hand lead. So right hand on the ride symbol, left hand on the hi-hat, even though that's not what's going on. So three, three, two, two. And then 
the left hand on one, two, three of the three of the three grouping. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two. So sometimes it's just that beat. Sometimes he fills in both of the in-between beats of the three. And then sometimes he diddles when he's just playing the three partial. Ooh, another important note, he's accenting the third partial. So it's right, left, left hand accent. Again, I'm flipping his way of playing it. Which is gorgeous, a really nice way of playing around with the dynamics there. So to sum up, the basics we have so far are right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left as a good way to just feel outlining it or right, left, left, right, left, left, ascending that left hand, the third partial of the three section. And then sometimes right, left, right, left, right, right, just the third partial of the three groupings. And then finally, sometimes diddling that third partial. But immediately, even as Carter establishes that as the bass line, like an anchor for your ear to hear, he starts to play around with it. He starts to get that ride cymbal in between the outlined accented figure. And instead the ride cymbal leads into other emphasized notes, such as when he plays with snare drum, things like that. Let's check that out. He's starting to play eighth notes here. Back to outlining. Okay, that's beautiful. Just eighth notes, so gorgeously light. And then da, 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 da. So getting some open notes, a little like double left hands for me, right hands for him. Ah, uh, right there, that was pretty cool. He's playing eighth notes, but it's almost like one and two and three and four and five and one. So it's a little rhythmic illusion where he's almost playing one, two, three, four, kick, snare, kick, snare. And if you do that, the fifth note's on the kick. And so the one, if you're counting two bars, oh my God, this is like, okay, so. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. 10 notes, and you just play. He's starting to move those ghost notes from the hi-hat to the snare here, so it picks up a little bit in energy. Instead of the lightness of the hi-hat, he's doing the same thing, same types of stickings, but on the snare drum. Hear that? Uh, what was that? Was that just hi-hat diddles or both hi-hat and rock? Yeah, sometimes just a little double stroke roll, sometimes just the diddle with the left hand to lead out of it. <laughs> if you want to get really cheeky with it though, you could do a double stroke roll and then one final left hand on the one. keep going with that open hi-hat figure he's doing. So the open hi-hats. I don't think he's doing that, but it's a fun little detail. So you get the hi-hat subtlety, the open hi-hat lightness with the double stroke. When I'm getting real cheeky with it, I'll put that last left hand on the snare drum. Next, we're gonna jump into what Carter has to say about how he actually pulls this off and has this amazing interplay and touch on the instrument with this piece of music. But if you're tense when you play, if you feel tension and you aren't relaxed, it's gonna be very difficult to play this stuff without hurting yourself in the long term. If you're having trouble executing the double stroke with the third left hand in a row for that open hi-hat, if you wanna get beautiful, gorgeous, light hi-hat figures, then I have a free Technique Fundamentals lesson on my website that's gonna help get your hands 
really relaxed and in shape play the stuff it's a totally free lesson go check it out let's dig into the rest of the video and one of the things i noticed um with that tune was me following along well kind of playing each lick or not each lick but each punch and it, it sounded kind of uh well sophomoric i guess you know and i, I decided to kind of break it up more um what i mean what i mean is I, uh let me show you So that's all on the beat. It's all those main emphasized rhythms. He's playing bump, bump, but that, bump, dump, but that. But coming up here, this is what makes it extra special. Yeah, my kick drum is doing pretty much the same thing that Victor's bass is doing. Yeah. yeah. And that's just, it's just too much. So what I, I tried to break it up a little bit with the snare drum. So, yeah, instead of instead of doing that, that whole, you know, that whole following everything that he's doing, you know, try to let it breathe a little bit, you know, and try to give it space. Uh -huh. Okay, so check this out. As a nice little easy way to get into this, he's sometimes throwing the snare accent on, I believe, I believe the fourth beat. But if, if our outline is da, da, ba, da, two, da, it'll say one, two, three, one, two, three. So if we just do one, two, three. That's the one, two, three, real heavy. But instead, on three, play ride kick snare, something like this. Like most of the songs that I write, I end up working backwards. When I'm writing the songs, I'm playing so much stuff because it's usually me in a room or something, you know, and I'm playing. Dun, dun. That's such a good observation too, what Victor is saying here, because when you're alone playing it, you might be more inclined to fill up the space more. I'm doing that right now as I'm trying to just demonstrate the general feel, I'm filling it up too much. And even Victor is saying he does that when he's by himself, right? The fact that they're able to not do that and truly listen to each other, they're dancing around by leaving space and then... Moving the feeling around but not overplaying, going real light, and not filling every damn space up with notes. Even Victor is doing it solo, right? But they, they back off and allow the other people in the band to contribute to that final landscape, that final picture. You know, and all that stuff. But when it came down to playing the song, I didn't have to do all that. I had Bela, you know, my brother Joseph's playing keyboards. Carter's got all the rhythmic stuff happening. I don't need to do all of that. So it made the song sound better, I believe, when I simplified my part. And so that's been influenced by everyone. The only thing that I did keep in the song where I was playing maybe two parts was in this, uh, I'll put the bass notes in there with the melody. I tried to put both of those because I thought, for one, it made the melody build a little better, having a low octave. And plus, it was kind of fun to try to do that, you know. Uh, but for me, again, just to reiterate the fact, I usually simplify my parts by the time I get to recording them. And I think it sounds better that way. <laughs> And Carter specifically, I know his playing from this record, I would occasionally see some Dave Matthews Band concerts on TV, but I wasn't super familiar with that work. So I do need to ask you guys, what are your favorite Carter moments that I should be checking out that, that anybody else in the comments should be checking out? Because probably we've seen bits and pieces here and there, of, unless we're a Dave Matthews fan. A 
so we need to know these things. You gotta let us know. I'm really excited to keep like digging in even more because he's always been a favorite player of mine, but I don't know his whole body work. I need to know more. We need to know more, guys. Come on. But on that subject of incredible feel and incredible touch on the instrument, I do have to give it to my guy, John Bonham. We're gonna talk about his huge contribution to hip hop in this video right here.